Awesome. Hello, everyone. Uh, if you are looking for the Duluth uh, improv improvised soap opera, you are in the right place. It will be starting around 2 p.m. My name is Casey. I was asked to come on here and reminisce about my hometown, Duluth. Uh, when I was asked, so many memories came uh, whizzing through, um, uh, such as holding my breath as a little kid going under the tunnels. Um, and uh, barely making it on the longer one. Uh, also being a cake eater because I went to East. Um, but I think my favorite, favorite memory of, um, of Duluth is uh, the Children's Museum. Um, I was a theater brat. We would always be doing shows at the Playhouse. Um, and uh, so that meant we had a lot of time to just kind of wander around and I always found myself in that large tree and I don't know, I don't think it's still there, but that large tree inside the Children's Museum where you could, there were stairs and you could go up and down them. There were taxidermied animals. Um, there was like little crawl spaces and I just, I just remember feeling like I was in another world. Um, yeah, and then it was also connected to the train museum, uh, which uh, to me was t a terrifying place as a child because I'm sure my older sister and brother told me that it was haunted and that, you know, if you're there alone, you know, the, the ghost conductor is going to uh, come out and get you. So, you know, especially being uh, a theater kid, my imagination was very strong. Uh, and I recall many, many times uh, seeing the conductor ghost. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the Children's Museum. Um, I remember uh, there was a space uh, in the theater itself that had this long um, ladder going up to, to the where the lights were. Uh, and I remember climbing all the way up thinking now as an adult thinking back I I just had no idea what I was thinking uh but it was very fun um what else gosh um in the summertime uh my friends and I my my siblings uh you know there was like that one really hot day uh in Duluth and so we would drive down to uh Park Point and uh, we'd keep the windows up so we would just be so hot by the time we got down there and then we would all just run jump in the lake for two seconds and get back out and that was all that was needed um, so that was a really fun memory uh, I also used to um, I used to be so mad that uh, Lake Superior was so cold that we didn't have a bunch of animals that lived in it. Um, mostly I was hoping for mermaids, um, but I read once about um, uh, not saltwater, uh, freshwater dolphins. I was like, why don't we have those? Uh, just very, very upset that Lake Superior um, was just cold and full of ships, so. <laughs> uh, I was very jealous of the people who got dolphins and porpoises and whatever else. Um, that definitely didn't stop me from thinking that there was definitely creatures um, in the lake. Uh, another fun memory for me uh, with Duluth, I drove a stick shift um, in high school uh, into college. Um, so, you know, when people ask me, do you know how to drive a stick? And if they've been to Duluth, I say, I drove a stick in Duluth. And their response is always, oh, then yes, you know how to drive a stick. Uh, I used to have to go all, uh, ways out of my way to then get a less steep hill to, to go uh, up to my house with. Um, what else? Uh, in the Children's Museum, I should say, um, oh gosh, there was always so many really fun 
uh, things that you could do. Um, I remember, uh, oh, this isn't the Children's Museum. This is the museum, the Maritime Museum, where it had all those white um, statues of people. They were, you know, like the captain was at the captain's wheel. And, and then you could go and see what the, the, where they slept looked like in the ship. Those statues terrified me as a child. And, and, and I remember you could push a button and it would be like, I'm, I was the captain and it would go on to this whole story. And I just, everything about it, I was just like, we're just asking, we're just asking for these ghosts to come back. So I guess the theme today, if I had to pick one, which I did not start out uh, thinking I had a theme, but I guess it's ghosts, um, you know, man. Oh, sure. Yes. Um, so uh, improv experiences that I've had in Duluth. Um, I, um, I got my improv startup uh, with Tom Isabel at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Um, and I took classes there, did a lot of shows. One of my, like, I was just reminded of this the other day that one of my uh, signature characters was named Mama. Uh, and Mama uh, was pretty much just my mom, you know, worried about random things, um, a lot of hand gestures, things like that. Uh, later in my life, though, I did, uh, I was able, uh, lucky enough to teach a workshop um, at uh, Renegade for, it was all female. Um, and uh, it was people who have done improv before, people who haven't, uh, and that was just a really, uh, really beautiful day of watching people discover, discover their themselves, discover new, new tricks, um, and things like that. Um, and I, I will always remember the late night um, improv the, the short form improv shows that would happen uh, that got very rowdy. Um, and I always was like, I think I'm a little too old to be up this late, but they were always very fun. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, and a funny, so I used to, speaking of ships, um, I used to be a tour guide on the Irving uh, which I believe still gives tours to this day. Um, and I wasn't one to remember all of the facts and details that I needed to as a tour guide. Uh, and I remember a little kid came up to me and, and was like, how much does the ship weigh? And I was, and I was like, you know, it's a great, great question. Um, I, uh, I believe it weighs 10 tons. I com completely lying. This little child without missing a beat turns to one of the big drums and says, but this is how one of these drums weighs five tons. And I was like, oh, it's 10 tons minus, minus all the barrels. So uh, I may have not known I was improvising at that time, but I sure did. Uh, and also sorry to anyone who was my tour guide. And, um, Awesome. Well, it has been my absolute pleasure being here. I love Duluth. I love everything about that city. It holds a special place in my heart. And I am so thrilled to introduce the cast of Duluth, the improvised soap opera.
Previously on Duluth. You're the only person that does this to me. You're the only person that gets inside me and... It's like my whole brain is itching. It's your fault, Sully. I've been straight with you from the beginning. Straight about everything? Stace, so... I think I'm... Pink. Pink's the colour. I want it painted pink. Pink? Yeah. Um, uh, it's going to stand out a lot on this marina. Yeah, but look at this marina. It's so dirty and boring. It's It needs to be brightened up. A bit like you. Between you and I, Sully, no, nothing's going on. Like I said, it's the same long plain record that keeps skipping and skipping. It's got so many scratches in it. You know what, Sully, this record needs to be thrown away. That's what needs to be going on. All right, all right, fine. Let's throw away the record. Let's take it to the thrift shop and hope that some DJ buys it for a penny. Penny is too much for that record, Sully. Oh, get off it. Before you accuse a woman of having a baby and then giving it away, you, you should get your facts straight or that's just upsetting. Elaine, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Did I hit a nerve or something? What are you doing digging around in old history, Ryan? Maybe those things are buried for a reason. You need some money. Things are tight right now. I could use a little help with something. This isn't a violent job, is it, Sully? Come on, Ryan, what do you take me for? We're the only people here, Elena. Why don't you come over and join me? All right. Uh... Yeah, I was just gonna give Jitters her afternoon uh, snack, but sure. Anything for you, Elizabeth. What's up? I just wanted to feel like it used to when I moved here five years ago. You're now so busy. It's not by choice, you know? I mean, I got the Angel's Heavenly Bakery barking down my door and, you know, I just gotta be like on, I feel like. But, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of times I feel like you're the only person who really understands what I go through as publisher of the newspaper. Yeah. Why would that be, Elizabeth? I've never run a newspaper. I barely run this business. But you know what it's like to run a business and to have all your money tied up in the business. And if it fails, everything's gone. Yeah. Well, you got me there. I do know that. I gotta tell you, Elizabeth, I appreciate you reaching out. I'm not the sentimental kind, and I, you know, I've been operating in a vacuum this whole time. So I appreciate this. I want you to know I appreciate you. And I also want you to know that I've been really worried about you. What do you mean? My business? I mean, I mean about you. You. <laughs> That's a pretty good hand you dealt me there, Sully Sunny. <laughs> well, Antio, you seem to have more luck than I do lately. Huh. What's going on, sweetie? Oh, <laughs> is your love life working? No, as per usual, it is not. No. Oh. Sometimes I think relationships are more trouble than they're worth, you know? Try telling that to the heart. Yeah. I don't know. Elena and I had a little thing, and then she didn't want it to be a thing. And so now 
Now there's no thing. She doesn't know what she's missing. Mm. You've, you know, you've always been underrated ever since you were a child. Nobody realizes your potential. So maybe moi. I got something in the works. Really? Yeah. Nothing That's to worry crazy. about. Nothing to worry about. Well, I just as long as you're not getting connected with the wrong people, you've always had that tendency. You're a good hearted person, but Sully, you got to stay away from the bad seeds. But look at it, it's so pink and it's so beautiful. It's, it's just so pink. <laughs> oh, screaming, screaming. Ryan, was it a challenge? Was it difficult? Oh, it wasn't that hard, just a full week. <laughs> oh, Ryan, I love you. Look at that, it just stands out so much, doesn't it? <laughs> See, see, do you know, I wasn't even going to, I was joking when I said I'd paint it pink. But I just got, I felt so triggered by her calling me Barbie that I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick it in her face. Exactly. Stupid. You show her, you show her who's boss. It's your boot. <laughs> show her what you're about, girl. Yeah. And good job, Ryan. Oh, thank you. Ryan, maybe you can paint other things pink. Hope you had a good holiday. You're missed on Doc. <laughs> I did. It was. Well, it wasn't all holiday. Some of it was business. <laughs> right. Um, I'm sure you had to pass by that pink monstrosity to get down here to me. I did. I think it's fun. I think the marina needs some fun. Fun. Pink yeah. is fun now. Right. I mean, the marina is the heart of Duluth and you know who wants to just see white boats everywhere and rope me I want to see white boats and rope everywhere I mean that's what we grew up around come on Sharon and this is not what our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents really wanted really Come on, what they want, it doesn't matter anymore. They're not here. We are. We have to run this business. Oh, we're running this business, are we? <laughs> you know what I mean. I mean, part of this is public land. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> don't even don't. think about it. Listen, before this goes any further, Elizabeth, I got to tell you, I got some work people there in the back, okay? And I got jitters and her friends running around. <laughs> Whatever you're going to say, keep that in mind. I'll be very subtle. I appreciate how you used to keep rum behind the counter for me. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Why is that a secret? It's, it was a secret and you kept it a secret. I wasn't supposed to be drinking tea with rum in a coffee shop. Hey, whatever a woman needs to do to get through her day, you know, who am I to judge? Yeah, that's the way I feel. Who am right. I to judge? So, so what's the problem? Where's the revelation? I, I don't want you to think that I'm judging you. Okay. For... I know there's still a bottle of rum behind the counter and I don't use it anymore. What are you trying to say, Louise? <laughs> You're so upset now. You don't even remember I'm Elizabeth. That's what happens when you drink on the job. I know from experience. I'm just saying that when you get messed up with the wrong crowd, you know, it's just really hard to keep yourself on the straight and narrow, which is the kind of guy you are, I know. Antio. I'll be okay, all right? Sometimes I think you, you want to talk about me because you don't even want to talk about yourself. <sighs> There's not much to talk about outside of real estate. I mean, I mean, John's gone. Thanks to me, I feel like. What are you talking about? That was so long ago. I know, I know, but... You know, when he came home from the war and he was so messed up, Vietnam really did it to him. And I, I just didn't understand. I, I didn't understand at all why he had changed so much. Why, you know, why couldn't he hold down a job? Why couldn't he do right? And then when he went off, had that car wreck. I just feel like it was all my fault, you know? God, I've just been more this. understanding. Stop it. You're doing this to yourself. Oh. You're such a good boy. You're a good person too. Dean, I'm just worried because, well, Stace is my boss and she's pretty unhappy about the boat. Oh, come on. Ryan, this is going to be amazing for Stace's business. <sighs> Christine, you agree, right? <laughs> I just think it's funny. <laughs> no, it's marketing. I it's just... Marketing. I feel a little bit like I'm a pawn in some game between all of you. Oh, don't make this about you, Ryan. Oh, no. You like a bit of a challenge, too. And this thing, this was a huge challenge for you. You knew you were going to get crap for it. It's good for you, Ryan, to have some focus.
public land, huh? Look, I'm I'm not trying to threaten you or say anything. Technically, I own 50% of this business, but it is totally your thing. Mm -hmm. This is your marina. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to state claim or anything. I just have a special interest in it as the mayor. Right, as the mayor. Okay. <sighs> I just, I can't believe you. You wait so long to finally become interested in a family business again, only after you get a little bit of recognition. <laughs> Typical. I'm, I'm not interested, okay, in the business. I could care less about how you manage this little doc, okay? What I'm interested in is expanding the loose reach. I mean, I like the sound of that. Just don't screw me over, sis. I'm not. I'm giving you a big girl project. How does that sound? <laughs> oh my gosh. Look, I loved Uncle Jack. He was more of a father to me than my own. He wouldn't want you to be like this, okay? You're right. I mean, you're, you're right. Uh, but it just sometimes it just gets to me, you know. But I may not be able to help him, but I can help other people, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I just want you. <laughs> Oh. oh, I got nothing. <laughs> Auntie you win again, Sully. Auntie o, you got it all. Well, Auntie we'll see. Next week? Give me a chance to win my money back? Yeah, of course. All of next week. Did you just call me out for having a drinking problem, Elizabeth? Well, I did see you one time at an AA meeting. So what, someone catches a fish once and they're a fisherman? So what, I went to an AA meeting. Maybe I was look, there supporting someone. Look, I just want you to know that I don't consider myself an alcoholic sometimes. When I'm a lot, but I have a lot of stress, I drink, but I don't see anything wrong with that. Who doesn't drink when they have a lot of stress? You know how many alcoholics there would be in this country if we, you know, everyone who drank when they had stress was an alcoholic? Elizabeth, I thought we were friends. You come in here calling. I am your friend. And I'm worried me. about you because I'm hearing some things about you. It sounds like you could get in trouble. Big trouble. Don't worry about me. I take care of myself. I'm going to inject $50 million into the marina for you to expand and bring in some new business. Okay? Do you think you can handle that? $50 million? Is this legal money? I'm running a, a city. Yes, it's legal money. It's city money. 
See, and it's questions like that that make me rethink if you are the person who can handle this job. That's not fair. I can handle this job, this little dock, this whole marina I've been running. So I can handle 50 mil. You've been running it, but what I'm talking about is bigger. So can you do the job or not? I'm sorry, Ryan. I don't want to put you in the middle of this. It's just that she pissed me off, called me Barbie. Who does she think she is, you know? I think she just has a lot of pride for the work that she's done for this whole marina and doesn't want it messed up. It's not that. She's never liked me since I, since I got here. But Christine, I also kind of agree with Ryan that making Stace Warner angry isn't perhaps the best thing you could do. <laughs> Why not? It's well, fun. Because it's a bit of fun and I get fun. I'm all for fun, but she's your landlady. You live here. And? Question is, who's the boss around here? Is it the customer? <laughs> or is it the landlady? As much as I don't want to re repaint the entire boat white, I'm inclined to agree with the face. I thought you two were my friends. I thought you were going to back me up. Ryan, do a bit of support. You gotta stick together. Fine. What are your tips for delays actors? I, I I think object work is um it's foundational to me um, because it, it creates a, a playground to do your scenes in. Uh, once you get comfortable with the physical environment being a part of every scene that you do, then you start thinking of things as how is uh, the outside influencing the inside. The problem that has arisen for us so many times is that the actors get in their heads. Get to the stuff. Don't Don't put something off until later. If you have an instinct to do something anything emotional whatsoever that is always the right freaking choice every time i say it to all my actors you know this uh follow your instincts the emotional choice is always right adding emotion into your scenes is always going to make them better um then yeah just don't don't hold back make a choice do a thing do not talk about doing a thing later writers, we're directors, we're producers, and this is what we also are. We're also the audience watching what it is that we're doing. And this shit is hard. To do it well is hard, and it takes discipline. I love what you've done to the place since you've moved in. It's fabulous. Well, you were the one who gave all the suggestions when you helped me find this place, Ollie. I'll tell you, I just can see it. You know, when I walk into a space like this, I just know it. I knew it was perfect for you. It's just got that, that glam, that sophistication, just the kind of woman you are. Oh, thanks, Ollie. That's why we're friends. I really appreciated how you helped me find this condo. It was my pleasure. It's what I do, you know. I love the opportunity to get to know people. You're such a fascinating woman. Inspiring, even. That, that means a lot to me, because when I moved here, I didn't feel like I was an inspiring woman, you know? I, I did move here right after my mother died. 
It's hard losing a parent like that. But it's a good new start. I'm sure your mother would be very proud of you. I don't, know about, that. I don't know about that here. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You certainly are in the catbird seat here in Duluth. You're in a very powerful position. You can make or break people. Jitters! <laughs> Hilton swear, back. He always I, does. Swear to God, I get him mixed up with the rats. <laughs> the rats? Oh, oh, you oh. can't you can't say stuff like that around me. Come on. I thought this was an apple. It's a mango. <sighs> you seem a little oh. frazzled today. Okay. They got well. What's that newspaper lady Elizabeth calling me names? I got rats in my kitchen. I don't know where jitters is. You can you cannot talk about health code violations while I'm in your presence. Okay, okay Mayor Sheridan. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I mean, Elizabeth, she's one you have to watch out for. Why is that? It's just a newspaper. It's just a rag. No one reads the Duluth Tribute. I mean, I don't. Yeah, but once she gets on your tail, she'll never get off of it. So just stay away from her. What if you don't mean to be afraid? That's exactly what I'm worried about. got your box. I have never been happier to see you in my life, my friend. How did it go? It went off without a hitch. This is good. This is really good. Did uh, you look at it at all, or did you mind your own business like you should have? What do you think I did? I'm hoping that you didn't do what you'd normally do and stick your nose into something where it doesn't belong. I didn't like being left in the dark, Sully. So yes, I did look. What don't you get about being in the dark where it's safer? Nothing can hurt you there. Once the light is on, you can see all the danger around you and you just keep running into the light every time I keep trying to protect you. I had to see what you were getting me into. Okay. So, how do you feel about it, Ryan? for coming. Well, what do you think? It's a little bright, a little loud, a little, it just, it pops, you know? What is your problem with me ever since I've got here? Because I'm a model, because I've got money. What is it? <laughs> uh, I have money too. Thanks. 
Well, what is it then if it's not money? I want to ask the same question. I mean, come on, Stace, let's be really honest. This could be an opportunity. People will look at your marina again. They'll notice it from miles away. It'll bring traffic. What's the problem? <laughs> Ali, my mother was not proud of me. I was not sorry that she died. She tried to control every aspect of my life. She didn't even want me to be in the newspaper business. Do, do you know, do you have any idea what it's like to absolutely hate somebody whom you're supposed to love? Well, I can't really say that I, I do, but you must be very driven to go against your mother's wishes like that. You have power. You've created this power for yourself. This newspaper, being a success at it, is the most important thing in my life because I have to prove to my mother that I didn't make a mistake. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I think I know just the person to help you do that. Listen, we've been friends for a long time, and I'm just trying to protect you. Trying to protect me? You know what? You know what happened the other day, Shay? My employee, Ryan, came in. He told me he saw my name on the emergency receipt. You're the only other person who knows about them. Listen, I have never, ever once told anybody anything. I promise. I don't, I don't know how Ryan got a hold of anything, okay? I don't. You're the only one who knows about that baby, Jay. You're the only one. If you didn't say anything or if you didn't, why is he even poking around? Like who put, even put him on that trail? I just hired you, me. She has access to my office. I, I don't, I'm so sorry. What? I didn't. You have to think about these things, Shay. You have to. All right, Soli, I know by handing this over to you, I'm gonna get my money and I can finally blow this town. Look, it'll take a little while for me to get all the money together, maybe a week, all right? You'll have your money, I'll have mine, things are gonna get better. Right. I'm thinking after this, I want to take Yumi up to Minneapolis. Start over. Look, far be it for me to tell you what to do with your life. 
So take it from me. I've tried running before. It doesn't always help. Problems follow you. You know what I'm saying? I intend to get out of Duluth. I don't care what it takes. So just take this thing. All right. Just be smart. Keep your head. I don't get Stace. That everything you've always wanted, which is recognition, to be seen, and now you have that chance and you're not taking it. Why? You know, it would be really easy to take this recognition if it wasn't tainted. I've heard what you've been doing, Christine, around Duluth. I mean, really, Cecile, like you care so much about family. Do you know what she's actually doing? <sighs> what are you talking about? <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. You're gonna play coy? <laughs> well, why don't you oh tell God. us what you think she's doing, Stace? <laughs> I don't think. I know. Lots of things get shared at the marina. Girls, this looks like this is going to turn out to some sort of war. And I do not want to be quiet. Listen, you don't know that's how they got that information, okay? Let's not jump into any conclusions, okay? I will, I'll look into it, okay? God, I got customers here. Keep it down. Listen, I care about you, okay? And I will do everything I can to fix this. Just don't make it worse, Shay. Just don't make it worse. Okay, I promise. I'll do anything, okay? I promise. <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to have to do anything. Hey, you tell me how you want this to go, and I'll make sure it happens. <laughs> Diane, I want this to go. I never wanted to have to think about this again. I buried it. I put a headstone on it and I buried it, Shay. That's okay. how I wanted it to go. Okay, so it'll stay buried and I'll make sure of it. I have some exciting news. And I think it's just the headline you need. Tell me now. Well, it's top secret, but I have some insider information. There's going to be a lot of money pushed into the marina. And it may not be mm, exactly kosher shall we say i like that kind of news well i think it's only right that the city know what's going on whatever their underhanded methods being used this city needs to know about it and i think you're just the woman exactly what i need <laughs> to save my paper. So 
So, you're talking about Arthur? Yes. I like Arthur. <laughs> is, that your big, is that your big reveal? I mean, you might like him, but does he also have a key to your Barbie boat? <laughs> there she goes again with the Barbie. I mean, if, if you're having a security problem, just let me know. I, I just... Seriously, girls, can we not just stop this bickering? Can we not at least pretend to be family? I mean, who cares who likes who? And I mean, you need us, Stace. You need desperately me because of the money that I always give you for your marina. And you definitely need, you definitely need Christine because she's your best customer. Why are you making this so difficult? Lucille? She likes Arthur. Oh, 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 she likes Arthur. Wow. Uh huh. Carry <laughs> on talking about Arthur. What a great idea. <sighs> Look. Somehow you started to grow on me, all right? I worry about you. But have you thought about your dad? You told Happy you're leaving town? I'm afraid if I tell him, he won't let me go. You're an adult. You can go where you want to. I'm not saying he's always been the nicest to you, but at the same time, in his own way, he does love you. So you should try at least to talk to him. Were you serious before, Sully? When you said that I could run from my problems, but they would always catch up with me. Look, I've been trying to make it in this town for a long time. And every time I try to turn my back on a problem, it bites me in the butt. I don't know how far you can get. Maybe I'm not like you, Sully. Maybe I can do more. Maybe I can be better. I hope so. I hope you can. But if for some reason you leave and all your problems follow you, you come back. I'll be here. I know you will, because maybe you're not going anywhere. But I'm telling you, Sully, I'm leaving, and I'm never coming back. Here are your tips for Deleuze actors. I think once we accept it, that it is, it's not live theater. Once we let it sort of tell us what it is in a sense and reverse engineer off of the limitations, then I think we're gonna continue to grow as we all have thus far in the art form. Yeah, just the use of filters alone. I believe it's the birth of a new art form, if you will. What you're talking about requires an understanding of style, like an understanding of genre, it depends on the story itself. So it required me to do my best to keep it simple for myself and, and also realize, if, uh, look to what's already here, what's already happened within a style, and it's a great place to practice wants. So for me, I'll go back to just the acting question, what do I want? What happens when I get it? And what happens when I don't? Um, I would say learn to live in the world 
of soap opera or of evening soap opera, the, the, you know, the nuances of that. Know the world you're in. And I believe uh, I would lean on the, on the side of simplicity. And what is simplicity if not letting what you have be enough and then going down into those relationships? The other thing that's really helpful is to talk about it as a group. I, I would say really learn what it's like to develop a good relationship here uh, so that it can go out. Because if you don't transform your pain, you're going to transmit it in, a, in an improv truth. So know that you're improvising like you've done everything else in your life. And if you can try to see that with a sense of compassion and, and understanding and gentleness and kindness toward yourself and others, that will leave room, leave room for the miracle to show up. Don't settle to be a Hollywood star when you are the universe. And I love that. Don't settle to be an improv star. <laughs> what a drag. <laughs> Don't be good, you know, just... Learn to run together, run together and see what shows up. Oh, Miss Grayson. Hello, Miss Grayson. Hi. I'm, I'm very impressed you by today. your book. Oh, I was taking a look at your books. Thank you. Leadership. Yeah, a lot of them came with the office. <laughs> But, yeah. but there are a lot of them that are very impressive. I trust you've been reading them. I wanted to talk to you about why the Zenith has endorsed you. <laughs> I mean, of course, you are a constituent and I'm always happy to address any concerns you might have. I didn't say anything about concerns. I was just letting you know why we endorsed you. All right, then <laughs> let's hear it. You're charismatic. You're well liked. You're incredibly, you have an incredible way of putting words together that makes people believe in you. <laughs> there is, though, Something that you're missing that I wish you had more of. Um, I'd like to know what it is. Please do elaborate. What is it exactly do you think I'm missing, Ms. Gerson? I will tell you in great detail. Well, I can't wait to hear what it is you think that I could do better. I just, I don't understand. I don't understand at all why everybody's just arguing all the time. Their life could just be so wonderful. <laughs> We need to teach them, CC. It's called jealousy. Do you think it's really jealousy? I mean, we share everything. We're so generous all the time. Certainly are. <laughs> Here I am. Here on your lovely deck. God, I love that view. Sweetie, you're, you're always welcome here. Mi casa, du casa, you know that. Well, we have some good girls club here, but I think we have some issues that we need to address. Oh, what issues? All day long it's been issues. Can't we just have some fun? Well, I guess we could. I guess we could, if we don't mind turning our back on our civil responsibilities. I always take care of my responsibilities. I take care of so many people. What is responsibility? Friends. Well, 
if you think it can wait, I guess it could. I mean, it's a beautiful day, but just let me say this. Things are about to take some big changes around here. God, I, I know you're tired of me just showing up here. Yep. Look, I want to help. I I want to be connected with you, all right? On some level. Connected. Um, okay, I'll let you know when I need a plow removal of the marina. Don't, don't treat me like that, all right? Look, I've made mistakes in the past. It doesn't mean that we don't have some connection to each other. Of course we have a connection to each other. We grew up together, kind of. I just, I don't know what you want. You need to just figure out what you want. Let me ask you something, okay? Just open your mind for a second, okay? Let everything in the past just sit to the side for a moment. What's bothering you right now? What, what can I do to help you right now? Um, there is the thing you could help me with. Sorry, I'm late again. I don't know, I've been getting used to it. Ah, this is still not an apple. It's a mango. Ugh. I was late on purpose this time, Elena. <laughs> well, at least you're being honest. What's going on? What's going on is I quit. You quit jitters just like that? I'm leaving town. <laughs> what do you mean you're leaving town? This is your life. This is everything you know is here. Where, you, where, you, where are you going, Ryan? Where are you going? Going to Minneapolis. <laughs> I hope Yumi will come with me. Minneapolis? <laughs> and you're taking, you're taking Yumi, you're taking Yumi with you? Unless there's anything you need to tell her. I brought you a present, Shay. <laughs> Leadership by James McGregor Burns. You have everything it takes to go the distance in politics in this country. Everything it takes, except one thing. Um, <laughs> Ms. Grayson, I'm very busy, so I'd appreciate it if you cut to the chase. You need to learn about politics and what it means to be a mayor. <laughs> um, I was the top of my class in Northwestern in political science, so I think I know a little bit about politics. <laughs> you, you know, I'm the youngest bit? mayor Duluth has ever seen. So I would say I know quite a lot about politics. I appreciate the Venus endorsement, but what I don't appreciate is you stepping into my office and telling me what it is you think that I need. <laughs> oh gosh, how little you do know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and how little you know about me. I can't... this... Ugh. Everyone pisses me off in this town, city, people. Olympia, tell us more. What do you mean everything's going to change? How? Do we have to talk about this? It's our only day that we have just oh, the afternoon, just us girls. I want to know the news, though. Well, I would certainly hope so. Well, I don't want to. Well, I'll tell you. I have some inside information on the marina. Huh. If it's the money you're talking about, that's old news. It reached me about four hours ago. Will it also reach you as to who's putting up the money? Apparently it's the city. <laughs> but you know what? I don't believe that. You're smarter than people think that you are. Because I don't believe it either. Well, that already makes two of us, sweetheart. Why is everyone so obsessed with money? What about <laughs> friendships? What about love and connection? Well, when you have plenty of it, you have a little different attitude than when you don't. Some of us just want it. God, I think about all the good I could do with $150 million. Tell you one thing. Money doesn't make the world go round. Thank you. Yes. I mean, it might not be a little problem. It's kind of like a big 40 to 60 foot problem. But... All I want, all I want is the opportunity to help you so that we can rebuild our trust, Stace. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Um... Can you, you still have that um, tow truck, right? Yeah, yeah, I still have the tow truck. Well, um, can you still make things disappear? You can consider me David Copperfield. I will make anything disappear. Anything from the smallest problem to the most gigantic problem you can have, Stace, whatever it takes, I'm telling you, Everything this week is shining for me. I can't do no wrong. I'll make anything you want disappear. Okay. Um, did you uh, see the Barbie boat on your way in? Yeah. Yeah, I noticed Barbie's dream boat. Well, what if um, the dream boat took a little bit of a vacation from the marina? Hmm. It could be troublesome, you know. I hear that sometimes pink boats are more likely to sink than other boats. Oh, that's even better. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. Is there anything that you need to tell Yumi? Y Yumi's leaving. I feel like she just got here. I, I haven't had a haven't had a chance to really get to know her. I I I, uh, I mean, what do I care what you do, Ryan? You go do what you need to do. Elena, I really want to start a new life and take Yumi with me, but she is very interested in finding out who her birth parents are and if you know anything i think it would change your mind i'll just say this ryan if yumi really wants to know who her parents are 
she really wants to reconsider leaving. She wants to stay right where she's at. That's all I can say, Ryan. That's all I can say right now. Oh, it's Elena, I'm leaving. It has to be now. It can't. It can't be now, Ryan. Trust me. It What I mean is with friendships, it's gonna hold together. Us three, I mean, we've we've got something so special. No matter what we go through, girls. And what I don't understand is what has Stace got against you, Christine? Something must drive her. <sighs> I hate this place, people. <laughs> Everyone thinks, Christine, look at her, she's a model, she's famous. I feel so lonely. Everyone's plotting and scheming, it's like, what's going on? You're not alone, you're not. You're like family to me. I love you. And this is a good thing. I've got to make it my home as well. I've only been here for six months. Back from London. Come on. Don't give up. Oh, it only took me about 15 years. <laughs> uh, like they say, Duluth is a pit bull. I'm fed up with pit bulls. I can't take another pit bull. You got us, sweetie. Three of us together, we can handle it. that little girl anymore, okay? And other people in this city may be scared of you, but I'm not. You know, there's a saying that if someone is ignorant and they don't know they're ignorant, you should shun them. You're lucky though, I'm not doing that to you. You are happy about what you learned at Great Northwestern. Well, I started learning about politics as a child at the feet of Coleman Young, who was mayor of Detroit for 20 years. I can teach you so you can go to the top. And by top, what I mean is you have almost everything it takes to eventually become President. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm listening. <laughs> Someone told me that I was running away from my problems, but I don't see it that way. I'm running towards a solution. And I think you should too. What if I'm already living in the solution, Ryan? Did you ever think about that? What if I'm already living it? What if you taking Yumi away is creating more of a problem for me than a solution for you? What, what am I even talking about? Do you what? hear yourself right now? The exasperation in your voice? Do you sound like you're living in a solution? <laughs> Listen, young man, what are you, 21, 19 years into your life? You don't know what it takes to get this far. I'm doing what I need to do to survive, to keep it all together, okay? Just need some time. Maybe I am young. Maybe I don't know that much, but I do know that when I'm your age, 
I don't want to have a big regret. Oh, who gave you the gavel to judge me? I'll tell you what you want to know, but it's not going to be today. Look, Stace, I got it all worked out, all right? <laughs> this week, if everything is right, I got a new business, a new idea, a new thing, all right? But I need your help. That's why I want to do this for you, okay? Rebuild us, rebuild my life. <laughs> I'm good with that. As long as that Barbie mobile is gone, <laughs> I'll do whatever. <laughs> All right, and uh, when I get this new thing worked out, you know, I'm gonna need your help, you know, just a little bit. Sure. I mean, as long as it doesn't bring down the reputation of the marina, I mean, that's that's why we're getting rid of the Barbie boat. No, 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 no. you don't understand. It's not gonna ruin the, the marina at all. In fact, no one will know the difference. I'll just use Doc 36 for myself. Okay, we, we haven't used Doc 36 since last time. Maybe it's time you and I got Doc 36 working again. Okay, I'll have the paperwork ready next week. All right. All right, good, good. And don't worry, if anything goes wrong, we're just renting Doc 36 to badass Sully. Right. Badass Sully.